Mind you, we swore an oath of loyalty but the rest of There's not more speeches in the Senate that will change the world. Rome is dying. My legions are mustering as swiftly as possible. Senators, welcome back to episode 13 in my Stellaris Roman Empire campaign. In the last episode, we finally activated the Last Bowel Relic special ability, the decision to create the New Bowel Life Seeding, instantly creating a Gaia world by terraforming through some natural process, and also by proxy creating several New Bowel species, creating our first dilemma of how to handle the first alien species living within Roman borders. It happened not through conquest, not through migration, but through rejuvenation of the last bowel relic. Now our first reaction was to slap chains on them and wait until the Senate could confer and decide what to do with the species and the votes are in. So let's take a look. So how do we treat the new bowel, our first alien species living in Roman borders? 50% said to give them residence. 37% said to keep them as slaves, 5% said to purge them, and 8% said to sell them to the market. Now several senators commented on the fact that it's a little bit of an skewed vote, it's a little bit unfair, that the first option wants to free them from slavery and give them residence within the Roman Empire, whereas the other three options all want to have them be slaves, just deal with them in a different way after the fact. Which I think is a very salient point. It is a 50-50 tie in that regard. And the true vote number was 49.7% for giving them residence. So it's actually technically edged out ever so slightly by the three other options that all want to keep them as slaves but want to do different things. Either murder them systematically or sell them. Or just keep them as is. So I think hopefully people kind of see my logic here that we're going to have to leave it the way it is. Now, because it's so close, we will do another vote a little bit further down the line. When we create our next colony, our next Gaia world, creating more new bowel species, we will propose this vote again with a very clear option one way or the other. And I will also levy reasons both ways as to pros and cons as to what can happen. Because something I failed to mention was political power, where they become slaves or where they don't, you know, how does that affect the planet's stability? Can they be leaders? Can they colonize? Can they breed? What are they good at? They're good at farming, but so are we. We're both agrarian. There's just a lot of stuff that we didn't actually account for. So it's a 50-50. I just think it's a fair 50-50. I think it'd be quite unfair for me to pick give them residence, whereas the other three options, the other half of the Senate, at least could sort of agree that they should still be slaves in some fashion. I think it's a salient point that I may have skewed that vote. So as a result, we're keeping it the same. Now another vote has come in. You may remember, of course, we asked, how do we handle migration in the Roman Empire? And with our ally, our potential ally, the Kosher Trade League. And the votes are in. Do we allow migration with the Mari of the Kosher Trade League? It's a 53% for yes, open the borders, and a 47% for no, they are not Roman. I should also point out that the other vote was a very quick turnaround time, but it actually had more votes than any of the votes combined. Or not combined, but in total. So a lot of people came to speak out, but it, it was a very short turnaround time as well. So I'm going to really, really ask people to come out in droves to have their say in future when we propose the vote again. But that might not be for a while. So as a result of this vote here with the Mari and the Kosher Trade League, we will be enacting migration, uh, a migration treaty, a pact with the Kosher Trade League, and we will see what the result of that's gonna be. A very close vote, but very clear options either way. 
So 53% is going to be for yes. Open the borders. Now, we might not actually get any of their pops. They not, might not get any of ours. Who knows? We'll just have to see how it all pans out. It depends really, I think, depending on the worlds that they have and the worlds that we have, whether or not some of Roman pops would want to even go over. And whether or not any Mari would want to come to us. Okay, so I've actually got a lot of stuff to address. I know it's gonna, it's gonna be a long time before we really get to any gameplay, just a fat heads up. So I've been going through all the comments from the last few episodes. I actually got a little notepad and wrote everything down that I consider quite important. So the first thing is people keep mentioning the fact that the subspace portals opened up and the Vezeran hegemony came through and raided Augusta and how this is a massive problem that we're going to have to deal with in future, that more portals are going to open up, that, you know, we're probably likely going to get attacked again and we need to better prepare and defend in future. So I want to look at our situation right now. I went through the logs, the data logs, if you will, to see exactly what happened here and how it happened and how long it took and how, what, how best to prepare for the future. So essentially, when the portal opened up, it was the year 2260, so it was seven years ago. It was on September 15th, the port, we got the message about the portal, the subspace rift opening up. It took three weeks for that portal to actually open. So we had a three-week lead time from knowing about the portal to it actually opening. It took two months for our starbase here to fall. And then it took four months after the starbase fell for the colony to be officially raided and they returned to their they started returning to their portal. So in total, it was about a seven month from the first message to the colony being hit. Now, of course, we don't know where this is gonna hit again or if it's gonna hit again for a long time. What like when it's gonna hit. It could be the next one, or it could go to other places before it comes back to us. We don't know. I don't have no idea. So we don't know the strength it's going to come at us with. It had about a 6k, 6 to 7k fleet power with advanced technology. I don't even know if we had a direct fleet to power comparison. I don't think we would come out better for it because they seem to have advanced technology. We would probably need uh, to overwhelm their fleet power a bit more as well. So a lot of people are saying you need multiple fleets in order to deal with this threat because we are so spread out. How can you cover all colonies at once? And remember, not all colonies even have a star base that's capable of defending itself the way the one at Augusta did, which held them for two further months. So first, let's have a look at how long it takes to move a fleet from one area to another. So I'm gonna let time play and wait until we get to the end of this month. I think we're also doing anomalies and things like that. I've queued up a few things, but nothing really worth mentioning right now. Let's just wait until we get to the 26th, 27th, 28th, and so on, and then we'll pause it there we go. So it's February 1st. So let's have a little zoom in of our fleet down here in the Gaia system. Consider this training, running drills and understanding sublight speeds and technologies and things like that because a lot of people are calling for new hyperdrives. The option appeared uh, in physics research and people are saying get those hyperdrives. You need to be faster. And it's true that hyperdrives, better hyperdrives will speed us up. But it's only, uh, you're looking at a tiny part of the problem, I think. So let's have a look. Here's our ship here. We're on the 1st of February. Let's try to move to the Tiralam system. So we're in the middle of the system already. Let's not forget. So we've already traversed half of it. Let's say. Obviously, you could come in here and go out. So it might be a bit quicker. But let's say at maximum, you know, you'll be crossing an entire thing. We're halfway through already. So we're at the halfway point. So let's let time play. Let's see how long it takes us. There's no leader on this. This is just a straight-up fleet with hyperdrive 1 and chemical thrusters. So I'm going to be arguing that we need better thrusters, and we also need more power on our ships rather than hyperdrives, although we should be aiming for both. But let's just see. I just wanted to explain my position here. So let's see how long it's going to take us to get from here to there. And remember, it took about six to seven months in total from the alarm to the colony being raided.
The speed of the ship decides how quickly it maneuvers when not using FTL travel. As we saw, it took far longer. It took twice as long just to move from the center of the system to the edge of the system than it did to take the hyperlane jump, right? So my focus is going to be on increasing speed, sublight speed of crossing systems rather than the jumps themselves. Maybe I'm wrong in trying to focus that, but that's where my focuses are going to lie. It's also increased by the thruster components equipped. So our thrusters right now are just basic chemical thrusters, the standard thruster. So this thing, the hyperdrive is going to speed up our actual charge up and jump time. And this one's going to speed up a sublight speed. So we need both. Now, a way that you can increase speed is you can immediately swap out something for, let's say, reactor. That gave us three more speed. Very, very small amount. The excess power is basically giving us 2.9% speed. What about afterburners? What does this do? Sublight speed, 10%. So that brings us up to 188 on our Corvette, Corvettes. So, you know, I don't know, 10 or 18 speed faster. So a little bit. I'm not saving that right now, but that's just to give you a full rundown of how that works, because I wanted to address it. I'm seeing these comments a lot. I'm reading things. and I feel like I'm under a lot of pressure here from you guys. And it's like, well, I'm also seeing people not even really address the problem, which is sublight speed more than hyperdrive tech. I agree that both needs to be addressed. Now, other people are saying you need multiple fleets. I totally agree. I don't have the alloys for that right now. Moving our fleet out, we suffer a 10, a roughly about a 10 increase to upkeep on alloys from moving out of this system. So we're just going to go back to Gaia for now and chill. And we can look to build up our fleets, but as I've been doing recently, I've been investing into alloys. You know, Elysium is our new alloy... Well, it's been a forge world for a while, but we're increasing the amount of mega forges that we're trying to support by increasing the moats production that we're doing, and therefore creating loads of jobs for metallurgists. So we're going to have 15 when this building is done, I think. And that's going to be, yeah, the, I mean, more alloy jobs than we've ever had before. But we need, obviously, way more. So I totally agree. The last few things to address, people keep mentioning to check special projects. We are doing the one for physics right now. In three months, we're going to figure out a little bit more about the subspace rifts that had been opening up. Uh, there are some interesting things in here, but the reason I don't do them... This one only takes three months, so I should definitely continue the Sentinels. It's been long enough now. The reason I haven't been doing them is just because it does, it does pause our technology research, you know? When people are calling for better hyperdrives, better FTL drives, and things like that, and then I go off and I pause things to learn about some story, you know... There's a divide out there between people in the Senate right now telling me what to do. Which I guess ultimately I have to make the choice, but it's it's really fun to read because it's like I can't do... If you read the comments, like you cannot do everything that people say. <laughs> um, the other last thing then I think is the hangar bays. People said if you want to keep piracy suppression down, uh, you could invest in hangar bays on the stations themselves. Now I'm not too familiar with what this what what is meant by that. For instance, I don't see any building called a hangar bay. I feel like I do remember a, a building called that, but I don't see any. And then if they meant on the actual ship, like the building itself, the defense platforms. Like, I don't know. You could get a hangar station section and then put scout wings, but I don't see anything to do with piracy suppression on these things. I don't know if that's true. So a bit more clarity and specification there would help because I'm not, I'm not too familiar with what was meant by that. And that's pretty much everything addressed. So a bit of a long intro there, but hopefully I've caught up on most of your questions. Some uh, <laughs> a senator wrote an awesome comment about how they're, I think, leading the two Corvettes that they've been given to nullify the pirates. That's true. There's only two Corvettes. And some people are actually saying, it's so funny, again, like, some people are saying, take all the weapons off these Corvettes. Other people are saying, give them more ships. So got to make our decisions ourselves, I guess. But I'm happy with two for now. That's enough piracy suppression, I think. And if we see that it's not, we'll increase the fleet. Um, having fleets out in the open and on the go like this all the time, they, it costs energy and it costs alloys. So we want to keep it as low as possible. And we can just, by storing up those alloys that we save, then we can just enable to build them and like crank them out really quickly. So the Augusta route right now is still suffering a little bit because we haven't yet gone, gone all the way to the trap system. So we're just about to, to get there. And then it should actually be full, fully locked down, I think. Now the other one is Colonia Pacifica. This place is trade is filtering all the way up through here and back to Seoul. Um, not having the best of times, I would say, because it's such a long route that piracy is now starting to appear out here. So we're going to have to fix that as well with another smaller little fleet 
just with two or three Corvettes again. Um, and I think that's pretty much all caught up. I am making another colony ship right now. And I'm making another construction ship up here. I've queued up the construction ship at Gruner to get all that stuff. Um, and we want to go out and basically have our next... Because we're about to get the... Let's see. The relic again is about to be active in eight days now. To enable the last battle yet again. And then we're going to, we're going to go up to Rana. And probably land on the Savannah world up here and colonize that. We can't colonize the one, the tomb world at Gruner Prime because we don't have anyone that's capable of landing on a tomb world yet. We need robots, we need droids technology, and we don't have that yet. Uh, there's also Tau Seti, which is 17 size. So I'm just going for the biggest worlds first, that biggest one being the Savannah one up here. The one at Ascala is 14 slot or size. We, of course, have a Gaia world here ready to be landed on, but I'm a bit afraid of it because there's still an excavation going on there and I don't know what's going to happen. But it's very likely that everything will be fine and we'll just land on it anyway, but I'm kind of waiting for the resolution of that. So the colony ship's going to take a year and then we can decide to go either right or left. All right, so that is everything for Princess, or I keep calling her Princess, for Empress Appia III to kind of cover in her mandate. And of course, at the moment, we have the... Uh, Senate is in recess in the galactic community, but we have the Galactic market currently being formed. All right, so situation log. What's our current engineering tech? Let's have a look We're about to get so I'll wait till this finishes. We'll select a new tech, but then I'll get the sentinels thing We'll figure out what's going on there. People keep saying that's really interesting We should find out about it for those who don't remember I'm actually I'm actually can't really fully remember myself, but the Sentinel's thick-scale plated outer layer has proven impenetrable with ordinary tools. The archaeologists need further assistance from the engineering department to proceed further. So this was one of the dig sites we had back on Cicero? Uh, I can't really remember now. One of, oh, Elysium. That's where it was. Yes. So we could read through all that again. But basically, I think there were statues. We thought they were moving about. Uh, one of our scientists at the time went missing. And then, like, part of the statue fell off. We saw that there was, like, biological tissue in it. Something along those lines. And that's where we're going to investigate further about it. So let's read the last one, actually. The archaeologists have reconstructed and modified the, uh, the, pers the scientist who died. I think it was Gaius Orbilius, if I am not mistaken. His scanner. Set to pierce deeper within the statue's hybrid composite material, it is picked up on weak radiation eman uh, emanating from their cores. To investigate further, it would be necessary to break one of the sentinels open, very likely destroying it in the process, since one of the statues has already lost part of its wing. Our archaeologists recommend starting with that one. Right, so we colonized that planet, and that, those statues were there before we colonized it. So that's that's what that's about. So yeah, we'll figure it out. All right, let's let time play again. Boom. <laughs> Instantly. Uh, what is this? This has nothing to do with me. The Pop Privateers. I guess it just tells you that there's other political uh, organizations within other empires. Pop Privateers are out here. They're, I believe they're a megacorp as well. Urgent message. So this is from the Exile who was looking at the ship that was... So the story of this is originally this ship was one of the very first FTL ships that we sent out into space. We didn't have much more information about it other than it went lost, it went missing, and we never heard back from them. Then we found the ship in orbit of this gas giant and pulled it up, I think. And the Exile is the one who's figuring this out. So, an urgent message has arrived from the scientists of the Exile. The crew is dead. Their mutilated corpses floating through the depressurized sections of the ship. As there is no decay in a vacuum. As there is no decay in vacuum, he can only guess for how long they have been dead. It remains a mystery for now why there is no atmosphere. As the ship's hull appears intact, the ships have to run out of energy. The ships seem to have run out of energy a while ago. It will take some time before we'll know more. Sorry, I don't know what's wrong with me with reading today. How horrible. Okay, so something's horrible has gone wrong with the ship. We need to find out why. Am I forgetting anything? Let's just close these down so I always see these. We've got a ship not doing anything. This ship's not doing anything. They can't do anything. They're uh, searching each other. And our new construction ship is available here. We're going to start expanding out this way. Excellent. Relic activation available. Let's go. This also gives us the 10% growth speed, so I want to keep that active. 150 influence to do so. All right, so that's active. Grim discoveries as the energy cells were exhausted. Sorry, all, what is wrong with me? 
All, all energy cells were exhausted, so some of them had to be replaced with reserve cells from the Hephaestio to get at least some of the ship's systems online. The logbook shows the crew joking in a joyful anticipation of their first FTL flight, but then all recordings broke up shortly after the ship's FTL engines were activated. It's hard to assess how much time passed but, uh, before the recording started again. The flight seems to be over and the atmosphere has changed completely. Those same faces smiling a moment ago are now distorted by pain and screams echo as they mutilate themselves. The recording ends abruptly. Shall we inves investigate further or leave the dead to rest? Okay. This is pretty terrifying, especially if that was the first ship you sent out. Destroy the ship, no one must know what's found. Now, we must know the cause of this tragedy. New technology discovered. Alright, we got our Corvette hull points. We'll just pick something. Wow, what is this? System mineral refinery. System-wide mineral processing hub that enhances mineral production for the entire system. Wow, that is pretty cool. And a dry dock. Specially designed facility makes use of advanced technology to maintain atmospheric pressures within the shipyards, allowing workers to more easily build, maintain, upgrade, and repair many ships at once. So sort of a military shipyard thing, I guess. Unlock our own habitats. There is like no way I would be able to make one of my own. Oh, this is such a tough one to choose from because this sounds like something I'd really like, so is this. These are rare technologies, so they do not appear very frequently, I don't think. Habitats, having a habitat in our territory would allow us to then get more megastructure technologies, I believe. So that's a pretty tricky one. It's gotta, I mean, then we have also the ion thruster. We were just talking about how we need thrusters. <laughs> Shit. This one's a quick one as well. I'm gonna, <sighs> ion thrusters will stay there, right? It has to, or it'll come back. I'm going to go with the habitats, although I don't think we'll be able to create one for a very long time, but megastructure stuff is so important, I think. So I'm going to say sorry to the uh, rare technologies. Man, that was a really good roll of text. Like, all of them were so good. All right, situation log, though. We're going to go with the sentinels available. Five months to research. Let's begin. The final report on that uh, ship from the Exile, working through the sensor data recorded during the FTL event, the Exile came to the conclusion that the prototype and its crew left our plane of existence and entered another dimension where our natural laws do not apply. The severe mental stress must have driven the crew, the crew to madness. While reviewing further data, a feeling of dark presence overcomes the science officer and his assistants. They quickly remove the data core to take it with them to the Hephaestio. Right after returning to their ship, our science team monitors an energy spike inside the prototype's FTL core. They initiate emergency undocking procedures, which they barely manage to complete before the ship vanishes into the void. The Exile speculates on the possibility that the ship itself might have been changed by the strange dimensional energies. Might it be alive? We may never know. But the retrieved data core provides significant data on FTL travel. Our knowledge expands. Weird, so that other ship is gone. Might hear from it again in future, who knows. Exile's pretty old now, 79. He's such a mysterious character. Because of course we found him eons ago, decades ago on another planet. And he wouldn't let us know what he was working on. And we promised to give him a job if... Or if we gave him a job that we wouldn't ask questions, basically. Alright, let's go research the uh, animals. The ravenous Zulkor down there. What else just happened? Oh yeah, the archaeology site. Robot debris. So this is... Let me remind myself where exactly this is. This is in the... Okay, yeah. It's down here. Grunthirst. Just so you remember exactly where we're looking. Alright, so battlefield. G1BRF, the asteroid, does not seem to have simply been a dumping ground for broken droids. It may have served as the actual battlefield where they were destroyed. The many layers of debris suggest a series of very intense battles waged intermittently across the better part of two centuries. Exactly why two interstellar powers would commit such vast resources towards waging a massive ground war on a small and unremarkable asteroid remains an unanswered question. Alright, figure out about that. That is curious. Or was this part of a larger planet at one point, maybe? Well, you, you would think not, if there's anything really remaining to study. Man, busy times in the Empire. Busy times indeed. Am I forgetting anything? Probably. I 
I feel like someone was asking me to do something. Oh yeah, the other thing was, we're on fast, so don't worry, time is playing, was to integrate the Tyrian Republic. This will be a vote at some point in future, but right now... Research project concluded. I'll read that in a second. Right now, our fleet strength, total fleet strength, is just under 4,000. Their total fleet strength is about 3,500. Uh, yeah, roughly. So, I don't want to absorb them. I want to keep them having their own fleet. We can't maintain that fleet as well. So together, we're stronger right now. Until we're definitely going to be stronger after absorption or integration, we'll leave them. Uh, I stop saying absorption. It's annexation, really. All right, dimensional portal. This is what we're studying in the situation log. As the telemetry of our probes sent into the rift shortly become before our first encounter. Sorry, hang on. Hang on. As the telemetry of our probes sent into the rift shortly before our first encounter with the Vazarin suggested, it was a portal not completely dissimilar to naturally occurring wormholes. In contrast to wormholes, however, the rift appears to have been artificially created. Our scientists have been unable to provide any explanation as to how this could have been achieved. Until we know better, we have to assume that these portals could open up anywhere. We'll have to be on our guard. That didn't give me anything. <laughs> I could have told you that. All right, so no more in no more stuff from there. That was physics. So if we want to nominate one of our planets, we can go to the decisions and say nominate for Galactic Hub nomination. The better the rating, the more likely the planet will play host to the future Galactic Market. I just don't think there's a point in wasting 150 influence. I don't think we're going to have the Galactic Hub or Galactic Market to ourselves. So it's it's probably like just going to go to one of the bigger empires out there. What else is in this situation log? Drone studies, Zeta Menace, the Moon of Gaia still has to be checked out. We're still doing that. We're still doing this. All right. Not much else in there for us to do. Our current physics research is now back on colony development speed. And we're on fast speed. All right. The planets are doing well. The economy is doing fairly well. Planetary administration is about to be here, so this unemployed ruler should get their job now. Are you kidding me? What? Oh no, it's just inaccurate up here. They, she has her job now. Okay, good. We do have an unemployed specialist, though. I'm confused why that doesn't say... Yeah, it's still refreshed, and it still hasn't... Oh, now has updated. Okay, weird. Well, an unemployed specialist. Uh, robot assembly... So they'll have a job when the assembly plants are finished as well. Okay, good. Uh, is this doing its thing? Yeah, it's just taking a while. Turmoil in the galaxy. We receive reports that the Vazarin forces are raiding the Kozier Trade League. And we actually have... We have eyes on, I think, in here, don't we? We have... We should do. Bazarin forces are attacking the Balmacos. <laughs> Jesus! That was so loud. The Sentinels have awoken. The engineering team is just prepared to disassemble the broken Sentinel when a gentle shiver passed through the statues and they sprung to life. Bodies of bodies humming and skin glowing, radiation pulsating from their cores has made the, them malleable and transparent, revealing a digital grid of limbs. Before anyone could react, they had surrounded the archaeologists and suspended them with a force field. Now they wish to speak with us. What the fuck? Hear them out, or sans them forever. No, hear them out. I want to find out what's going on. Jesus. So loud. The sentinel with the broken wing turns to one of its peers and speaks. Please, Devana, set them down. I wish to be freed from this prison. I can no longer count the days we have served our masters, toiling on this earth while they enjoy the heavens below. I am alive but dead. They are dead but alive. Will you not let me go? Devana looks at her with disgust. Exclesia. Or what is it? Excelsia? Excelsia. By the gods, keep it together. Our loved ones rest below. Have you forgotten our sin? We made a promise to guard their afterlives eternally. That is our only redemption. She sizes her up. She sizes us up, sorry. You are no threat to us humans. Leave us in peace and we will protect this planet eternally. What? <laughs> what are you? 
We are guardians of the gates to heaven, keepers of our people's immortality. Heaven? Heaven, yes, though I doubt your concept of heaven matches that of our masters. She raises an eyebrow and snickers. Okay, <laughs> she has eyebrows, she snickers. I mean, this is always the thing I never really get with like aliens in, in these types of games. Like, they're very human. Our masters are of refined taste. We accept your protection. Removing the site from Elysium adds sentinels to Elysium with the following effect. Max districts, negative one. Unity from jobs, 10%. Or we say we need this land, dot, dot, dot. I don't know where that leads. And this is Elysium, our forge world. So I don't necessarily need this unity here. I'm not going to turn this into a, a holy site. I'm trying to think, like, what would the Romans be thinking here? I mean, these are false gods. These could not even be gods at all. We need this land. I think that's what they'd say. That's what I'm saying. We cannot let you disturb the ground where our loved ones lie. Let them rest in peace and you will never have to worry about outside threats. Hmm. You'll vacate this land instantly. Or we could use your protection. I do like the idea that we, they say we'll never have to worry about outside threats. I don't know how they can, you know, promise that. But at the same time, I think it's really odd to just leave them there. I don't want to fight them. <laughs> we are, Here's the situation. We are being raided. There's raids across the galaxy. And we have someone appearing here saying that they'll protect us on this planet. This is our forge world. This is where we make all our military and alloy production. I think it's imperative that we actually agree if, they, if they're, what they say is true. So I'm going to say okay. We could use your protection. If you could follow through. Excelsior approaches the archaeologist. Please, I beg of you to end my suffering. You are free to go or know we need you. Um. Hmm. Man, this is so interesting. So, like, they say they can protect. They had a little argument amongst themselves about staying here. And how she wants to leave because she's unhappy. But the other one was like, no, you have to honor the promise that we kept. So I'm going to say, you got to stay. Like, that's part of the deal, in my opinion. Oh, my God. Titanic life on Colonia Egyptus. The native life on Colonia Egyptus is built on epic scale, far larger than anyone previously thought possible for biological life. The question now is in the minds of our researchers, what is their secret? Can we benefit from it? Proposals to study the native life in greater detail are flooding in. Proceed with the study, leave the giants alone, or study them, harvest them, and see if if and see if anything is useful. A Titan Hunter job every 30 pops. Titan hunters have 30 get 30 food. Max agricultural districts plus six. Holy crap. This could be another massive breadbasket to the Empire. Issue special project, project, Titanic Life Necropsies. Delicious Titans modifier added. Oh, damn. I, I don't know. <laughs> I can't decide anything. I kind of want to like proceed with the study because I feel like we'll learn something really interesting. But at the same time, I'm like, this is pretty interesting. We are xenophobic. These are just animals, right? They're not like intelligent life in terms of you know, communication. Gaia is our current agri-world. Colonia Egyptus doesn't have any. It'll have six more districts. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a lot then in total. Pretty nice amount of food that could come out of here. Colonia Egyptus, it could be our second. It could be like, you know, Alexandria, essentially. People did want me to name that. But I don't like the idea that we're only doing it by hunting. Although... Yeah, fuck it. Let's do it. I think I think they would do that. I think humans would do that. Roman or not, I think humans would do that. <laughs> Harvest them and see if anything's useful. Wait, hang on one sec. This, the only last thing is... This is a permanent modifier, right? It's not like it just removes it. Because I feel like we might hunt them to extinction. 
And then we do still get a special project. All right, delicious titans. Harvesting the titanic life for research data has had an unexpected side benefit. They taste great. 30% food from jobs here. Wow, look at that. Boom. Boom. District central for food, which is excellent. <sighs> What's the special project? By harvesting the titanic life, we should soon work out best how to exploit them. So that's still pretty... I mean, we can still figure stuff out about them, which is important as well. Society research is currently getting the Central Research Bureau. Yeah, we need that. All right. And then there's the... Oh, God. There's so much stuff to do. An empty building up here. A new slot. They have amenities. Let's get more research on the go than I suppose. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe we'll build a bureau. How long is that going to take till finish? 14 months? We'll wait. What about out here? I would like to build the gas building out here, but we don't have that yet. That will support the upgrades of tech. Their amenities are kind of low, I guess. This is Gaia itself, which we have changed to an agri world now. Perhaps robots? Uh, I don't want to turn alloys. Um, a temple. Temple provides consumer uh, amenities as well. Sure. Let's get a little temple going. Alright. <laughs> I've barely done anything in terms of time for this episode. I love it though. I just hope people don't mind. I always feel the pressure to be advancing faster. I'm not trying to extend it out. It's just I get really immersed. Migration between... Oh my god, I completely forgot about the migration pact. Offer the Migration Treaty. The Mari people should not be prisoners in the Kosher Trade League, and neither should our own people be limited to inhabit our territory. Let us agree to remedy this. Our population will be freely able to move between both empires. This will increase our tr their trust of us by 25 each month, up to a maximum of 75. Uh, by 0.25, obviously. And it'll cost us a 0.25 influence each month. We currently make 4.95 influence per month. Let's agree to it. <laughs> Um, our projections suggest the free exchange of living capital between our worlds is imperative for economic advancement. Comment, commence the brain drain. Okay. Construction online. Now, oh, just reminds me, there's no branch offices set up here yet. No, no. So they haven't like spread their seat. Oh, also, there's the raiders. We can see them. They haven't spread their seed to our planets. Looks like they're capital of this province cake oh my god they just got decimated we just watched it happen devastation per quality minerals an ancient world interesting i've actually never seen one many millennia ago this world was the cradle of some forgotten precursor civilization is this another gaia world it is what's with the amount of gaia worlds um their identity remaining a mystery to this day, where they want, where once stood an Ichiminopolis, raw life has reclaimed the planet. The remains of giant buildings peek out from the dense forests, while oceans have covered entire city districts once protected by colossal dams. Pass underwater vents. There's nothing necessarily to suggest. I guess bomb craters and city ruins. Now the interesting thing about a um, an ancient world is also misaligned rings here. They don't look misaligned, but it says they are. The interesting thing about this is that we have, as the Romans and our origins and our gods, we have the ability to dedicate planetary bodies to certain gods. And I think one of them requires an ancient world. And they're really rare. Like, that might be the only one we'll ever find. There it is. We could consecrate it to Jupiter, which gives 10% or 10 stability globally. That's to everybody. That's one of the rarest ones that we have. So that's not just on the planet, it's everywhere. And we have to do it to planets that we don't occupy, uh, colonize. So we wouldn't live on the ancient world, we would just do that and get 10 stability everywhere else. It's just something to keep in mind. An ancient world. Alright. So yeah, they're getting wrecked as well. So it's not just me. 
He's getting hit by these things. So yeah, they are a little weaker against armor. So for sure, if we were to fight them, as people have said, stock up on armor rather than shields. These, these are weak against armor and these are good against shields. They just don't have anything good against armor. So there's always that to consider. They haven't gotten any bigger with this raid. That's the same size that came into us. The Nerilga Swarm is getting hit now as well at Kundia. Or it might not be at the capital. That's the other thing. It could be anywhere. So the Mari are out here. See, we don't have good enough relations. We almost do with Site 10667 Override to actually go through this territory and see what's going on out here. Because clearly there are alien menace. There's a, another Gaia world. This is getting ridiculous. <laughs> what the hell is that? It's just like a big... Is it like the Tianqi things, I think they're called? Where's this Gaia world? There it is. And more battlefield debris and all this stuff. So many Gaia worlds. <laughs> it's insane. We might just be in a really lucky part of the galaxy. And the fact that we can create them obviously changes things. An insult from the Tyrene Republic. Come on now. Come on now. We're gaining relations with them. But it's just taking... It's going to take some time to bring them around. Gave you territory. What more do you want? Alright, what's what's next? What are we doing next? The colony ship is made. Haven't learned any more about... Uh, not that one. The one that we're currently researching here. This is still ongoing. Difficulty 8, skill bonus 6, clues 10. Okay, so... We're, we're at the tipping point where we'll start getting breakthroughs pretty soon now, I think. To figure out what happened here. I don't think I'm going to colonize that one first. I think I'm going to go for Rana first. Which means making another colony ship. So we're going to try and colonize the Savannah world at Rana. It's this one here. What's the other world like? Nothing terribly unique about them. This is the ghost warship on the northeast of our empire. So, the Orange Freaks. Uh, Septimia reports finding records from the last Charmakarad ever held on a ship she is studying. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, my voice is going. It took place not long before the collapse of the Charmak civilization. Uh, the only item on the agenda was a new foe the Horde had encountered. The Charmaks did not care to learn their identity, referring to them simply as the Orange Freaks. They had conducted a series of hit-and-run attacks on a smaller, on smaller, more isolated clans in the Horde, which for the Charmak was something unheard of, and finding themselves on the receiving end of the attacks for once was a cause of great concern. Many Charmakars pledged their clan support to the retaliation campaign. Uh, campaign. So of course we remember this is... Is this on a gas giant as well? Is, okay. This is the, like, extremely militant tribal empire that have, like, all these... Not quite festivals, but I guess are familiar with doing this a lot. I can't think of the word. We'll just move on anyway. You know what I, Hopefully you know what I mean. Um, yeah, I can't think of the word. It's like rituals. That's what I'm trying to think of. All right, just check that, um, that trade. Yeah, look, see, we've actually fixed. So this one fleet of two Corvettes, I know you may complain about it, but two Corvettes is more than enough to keep the trade between Augusta and Saul, totally fine. Broken world of the Astonine. So this is what we were studying just here a second ago. We had our breakthrough. In the computers, our team found footage of the Astonine's last battle, the Tistra. Astonine's longtime foe attacked a planet near this planet without a formal declaration. The Tistra built highly advanced fortifications using their advanced technologies, and the Astonine had to give up ground. Astonian forts were being taken by the Tistra one by one, while a small group of brave Astonian warriors sacrificed themselves near this planet, fighting until the end. Our scientists played the footage. The result was unexpected. The Astonian admiral cleverly projected fake images of their fleet, and the enormous Tistra fleet fired upon their allies, fooled by the holographic fleet, which eventually led to the Tistra's defeat. However, we have one question left. Why did the planet become devastated even though they'd won? Our team decided to look for more clues. 
Hate to be that guy, but this could be written way better. <laughs> like, Astony's longtime foe attacked a planet near this planet. That just sounds so weird. Yeah, and they, I don't know, they just reuse words a lot. Anyway, sorry, sorry to be critical, but it's hard to read. Anyway, strange indeed, let's keep going. Oh my god, negative 60%, we're going to find out there any so anytime soon. So yeah, so we're going to direct ourselves to the other place first. Alrighty. The anomalies continue. And how's our alloy production now? It's up to 43. Discovered. 50, so let's tell everyone to work on that no matter what. And we can tell people to get off this, and they can promote up, so no problem there, and then put them back on. A little micro-intensive, but it just keeps us having specialists and keeps our clerks in action. This place is in need of pops if we want to fill out the uh, technicians and miners, though. Um, okay, so we're, yeah, 43, that should go up next month. 49, nice. Colony development speed, that tech is now done which is just in uh, in perfect time for our new colony to be set up. Level four lasers, is it? Is it level three? Oh, actually, level three, I think. FTL inhibitors. Planetary shield generator, which is already half done because of that technology we had. Uh, so we, or not technology, because of the events. We studied the Vazarin menace and hegemony, so we ended up getting 50% of the tech done for planetary shield generators. And this allows us to build a building that helps with orbital bombardment damage. Now, the thing is, they're not doing orbital bombardment. They're just instantly, like, through a script, I guess, you know, devastating the planet. So I don't actually think this would help. It'll help against, like, actual empires, but they just seem to, like, hover over a planet for a couple months and then, like, instantly take it down to 50%. Maybe this would reduce that, but I, I don't know. But anyway, it's gonna stay there because we've already started researching it. The energy nexus, barrier point defense. I'm going to go with FTL inhibitors and star based FTL as well. Allows us to trap uh, other empires as they're coming into systems and things like that. Alright, 11 months to go on that one. The research bureau, bureau is 4 months to go, and the habitat has started research now properly too. What else do we have in our situation log? Probably do want to do the Titanic life thing soon as well. Okay. Slightly over our admin cap. Let's check who has zero jobs. Nobody. Okay, good. Construction online. Still don't know what's here. Haven't come across them yet. We do see a ruined ring world. I forgot to mention with Alaria that we'd never come across a ring world before, and I just kind of passively ignored the fact that there is a massive superstructure that wraps around a star with several districts on it for life. Ancient's Forge, we've got another thing down here. What do we got? A ruined macro engineering site. Constructed eons ago by a spacefaring race. I, I had no idea what that does. Macro engineering? No idea. Looks like a little ring world around a multiple ring worlds around a weird looking thing. I don't know. <laughs> no idea what that does. This place has been ruined as well by something. Yeah, I forgot to have a, a really good look around at where these megastructures are. See, we don't have any in our territory, so it's going to be hard to roll uh, to come up with the technology that gives us stuff for megastructures, which is why I'm doing the habitat one. Because if that one went away, it might be a very long time before we see it again. The, the Infinity Machine I don't think count as a megastructure. They are a Leviathan. Despite being presumably some sort of artificially created object. I haven't heard from this thing in a while. Okay. Our territory is expanded out here nicely. Let's just keep going. That's going to be the last one. Then we have new archaeological site out there to get. And then we'll... Our colony ship is going to follow and colonize Savannah, that Savannah world out there. Alright, the year is 2267. Discovered. I think we've only done one year, <laughs> maybe two. Alright, we got our Central Research Bureau. Unlocks the development of advanced technologies. I still don't know what that means. I look forward to finding out though. So we're just gonna pick something basic, like a tile blocker removal thing. And then we're going to commit to the situation log. So let's investigate whatever is the quickest. So Zeta Menace is only two months. Let's figure out what's going on with them. 
Now it says three months. That's fun. So that should be pretty quick to do. So our tech world. Let's see where this building is. There it is. Central Research Bureau. We actually have enough already to build it. And its upkeep is one exotic gas and one rare crystal and one moat. And 10 energy. Interesting. But its research speed is then, for the whole empire, is 5%. Alternatives is 1. So more research pops up. I guess that's what it meant. And the planet modifier is 20% researcher output. So this is pretty good. I wonder, you can only have one of these ever, I'm assuming. It's a pretty cool building. Seems pretty powerful. Alright, let's pick a new track. It seems to always play the same ones. Alright. Still kind of want to get um, wormhole tech and figure out like where this wormhole goes, for instance, and the one that was over here. Also want to just keep improving those alloys so we can get ready to perhaps attack the Nerilga Swarm or the Site 10667 override. Their, their fleet is now equivalent. Now, they just got attacked by the raid thing, so that could be why. Uh, we haven't really built our fleet much more since. Site 10667 override's uh, superior. Construction online. What was this, by the way? Senate's now in session for regulatory facilitation, which is going to increase diplomatic weight from economy. Also, worker pop resource output is increased. Yeah, I'll vote for this. I'm happy with that. The Dacorite are against it, and the Royal Zeltec Domain. Uh, yeah, so some people are asking about the Royal Zeltec Domain. I think they're down here. I didn't make these guys. I don't know who they are or where they came from. They might have been, like, completely uplifted. Oh, enlightened? Yeah, so they were a priest, uh, a priest what do you call it? Um, a primitive civilization, I think. And they were uplifted. So I don't know much about them other than what we see here. Authoritarian, xenophobic, fanatic ecocentrism, and elitism. They're really, really small, so nothing too much to worry about. But as we see, you know, empires can be created. The Daweno Trade Commission <laughs> uh, have been created as well. Nothing out this way, though, yet. Research project concluded. Space amoebas. So that was the Zeta Menace that we were studying. The entities encountered by our fleet some time ago are new horrifying life forms, quickly named space amoeba, following an analyst's gross misreading of initial sensor output. The creature is in fact larger than the average Roman corvette. That is funny, yeah. Amoeba, you'd think quite small. Anyway, there would be little harm in, pu in putting the monstrosities out of their misery, misery for science, or some equivalent. Easy prey, amoeba hunter modifier added, adding the following effect, damage to them 33% and a thousand energy every time you kill an amoeba fleet, or a special project for amoeba study. I'm always going to do the thing that I think will end up giving us more in the long run. Because we haven't actually encountered any more anyway. So space amoeba study finishes in eight months. Titanic life. Let's do this one. Zeta menace. Oh, that's a Leviathan. I don't think I've ever seen that before. thats I didn't realize it was a Leviathan. Um, and what is this? Yep. That's a fucking Leviathan. Technically, we don't know much about it, so we're going to have to just study it, and then we'll give you a full report. But from what we can see, it's a fucking space dragon. Alright, apologies for the language. I think it's warranted in that case. Who's abstaining? Several people are abs actually abstaining. I'm surprised. Is habitability really that bad? I mean, it actually is for the Dacorite, so I can see why they'd oppose it. Okay, so we've just finished Colonization Fever, and we've got our next thing now. Pop growth speed increased again, or we could go with something like Empire Sprawl from Systems and Colonies is reduced by 25%. We'd have to work our way down to that one. We could get pop growth speed right now, I think. Actually, I'm going to go with this one first. Then I'm going to go with the courier network and then the pop growth. How long is this taking? Almost done. All right, cool. So our next colony ship is ready. We're going to send it out to Zosma to get ready to colonize over there. We have more room for even more buildings. Uh, let's just get more 
commercial zones. Although I think we're already... Construction online. Yeah, we just need more pops more than anything. We don't even need more buildings. Just more pops. Tianqi. Uh... Our trade treaty with the Kozier has timed out. Oh, we traded the active sensor link. Oh yeah, okay, that's fine. The diviners name the beings floating through the dark Tianqi. We are to keep a respectful difference uh, distance. Research option gained frequency tuning, and frequency tuning has now advanced 20%. Alright, let's keep studying stuff in our log. Investigate the moon over Gaia. Let's go. Just trying to think, do we need anything on this world? Like, gas extraction wells are now available to us, but we don't need them on this planet. Something that, like, robot assembly plants mm, would kind of make sense here. Actually, you know what would make sense? The Senate House. Higher stability here means higher output. The fact that it's an alloy world, I think, is quite important. So, yeah. Also get some admin cap from it, too. Which we need. Okay, looking good, looking good. Galactic community is going to be in action for a few more years now on that vote. Alright, let's finish off grabbing all that and then we're going to go down here, grab everything we can. Let's check this construction ship. It's done getting the... No, that's the wrong one. Right, we're done getting this area. Let's expand out here then. Cool. We have the gas that's coming in here. So that's going to be used for the research bureau, which is just being set up now, actually. We have extra resources I've never seen before from the mods and stuff. Iodizium crystals? Iodizium. I don't know how to say that. Iodizium? And then uh, quasaric energy. Plank photons. Okay. Like, I know how to say iodize, but it's like iodizium, I guess. Iodizium. Independence was guaranteed. Those two empires. Alright, colony ship is now about to touch down on... Actually, we haven't set which planet we wanted to go to. It's not that one. It's this one. Now, something else that's really important is do we have... So, no Mari have joined us yet. I don't know if we can tell if Romans have gone over to them. But so far, the migration pact has not changed anything. You would think that we would get some Mari for the Gaia worlds that we inhabit. They might come to, to those worlds. Research but I'm not sure actually what determines it. it. All right, the FTL inhibition has been completed. Gravity well projectors can now be used to create localized pockets of space where safe entry into hyperspace is impossible. The immense power requirements and the size of the projectors prohibits their use on anything smaller than a starbase. Um, so we have better combat computers, disruptors, hyperdrive 2, research alternatives, planetary shield generator. Let's get the hyperdrive. So many of you wanted it. We'll slap it on our ships pretty soon. We have now nearly 2,000 alloys. In the bank, making plus 50 uh, right now. Dimensional Travelers? What the hell is this and who figured it out? Oh, this is from studying the moon of our planet Gaia. Unraveling one mystery has led to another. We now know that Gaia 3A was drawn or was sent into, into the orbit of Gaia from another dimension. Unfortunately, we have no idea why, as besides a slightly different level of background radiation, Gaia 3A seems utterly unremarkable. Still more baffling is how the machinery found at the center of Gaia 3A was, which presumably enabled a dimensional shift, works. For now, it might as well just be magic. So we don't, we don't understand how this moon appeared here, why, because it doesn't seem very special, and anything about it. So we've gotten more... <laughs> we have the technology research option gained for jump drives? Okay. <laughs> and 10% done of jump drives already. That seems a little uh, early. Forget... Hyperdrives. Let's get jump drives. It'll only take 71 months. It's actually not as long as I thought. It's actually not as long as I had thought. Let's wait a little bit until that number comes down, but that would help. That technology right there means we can jump to wherever 
but almost wherever we find a problem and engage like with a raid it'll hurt our um, fleet power after we do the jump for a while but it does allow us to get around pretty quickly it'll definitely allow us to jump in a spiral galaxy it's quite important to be able to do that because we could jump from here to here like just go straight across without having to take the massive journey that it would take to go around there so it means that like let's say a raid popped up at Colonia Pacifica and our fleet was stationed at Sol we can jump across to Eri wait for our uh, fleet power to come back up and then engage so I think it'll be very important technology to have but it's typically as far as I remember and understand it's not a technology you get for a long time so to have it levy, uh, levied up to us so early is quite interesting I thought it was going to take like 200 months I'm surprised it's as cheap as it is uh, but let's just go with Hyperdrive 2 just for now 12 months uh, upgrade all that stuff and then we'll maybe start investing into that one they're expensive to maintain as well it's not easily applicable actually in fact I think the technology requires dark matter to even put on a ship no it only costs alloys hmm. well it's interesting it says like we don't understand the technology on that planet but I mean we clearly fig like have some understanding of like jump drives now we even understand like the concepts so it's kind of interesting All right, we're about to wrap up. Let's see, actually, we're we getting the next project. Let's get the next one. Let's do the Titanic Life. And let's do the drone study. Seven months, we'll complete both of them and then we'll wrap the episode up, I think. But everything looking, I think it's pretty good, actually. Uh, the robot debris is on that asteroid. Our archaeologists have learned that after a long and bitter war, the two empires inhabiting this corner of the galaxy some 200,000 years ago signed a treaty compelling them to settle all future disputes with arranged and highly regulated combat engagements between robotic armies. Uh, this asteroid was chosen as the site of battles. The treaty appears to have been uh, upheld for nearly two centuries, preventing the outbreak of armed hostilities on numerous occasions until one of the empires was caught cheating. <laughs> that's awesome. And that's it. Engineering research gained a thousand points, straight up. Six artifacts. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Do we have... We don't have a um, construction ship out here to get that kind of thing. Uh, let's go... Oh, we can't go in there. Not sure what Marcellus or Vicius is going to do now. Where to send him. Let's just take him off the ship for now. Oh, you know what? Where's Tiberium? No, Tiberium already has someone assisting research. Yeah, okay. All right. That's kind of cool. Did that then further our situation log really quickly? Establishing it, colony. We just got a thousand points of engineering tech. Uh, our colony is now starting to touch down in the Rana system on Brigantium, Colonia Brigantium. I guess you could call it. Online. And this is actually within um, our governor's space here for Agrippa Pacillus. So he's within space for that. Another thing we could do as well is clear some blockers. The dense jungle can be cleared out here. And that is it. We have unemployment now on Terra. Let's just shift them over to Elysium. Good. And our leader has died. Scientist Servius Lentidius has died at the age of 82. And he was on this ship. So now we can put the scientist that was busy over on the other side onto this. And he can continue the excavation. So that kind of worked out. Uh, last thing I want to check is Tiberium. Yeah, so the Central Research Bureau is up and running. Which is giving us a science director job. Which means we're just producing way more science out of here now. I should really have compared the the uptake that we have, but I believe we were on like 450 science, and now we're on about 600 in the, over the course of the last couple of episodes. So, yeah, we're vastly improving tech, I think. I feel like our tech is growing quite a lot, which is good. And we haven't like super specialized in it. It just seems like it's going pretty well. What the hell is this? The Vazarin Hegemonies are now raiding the Tyrrhenian, the, Ty the Hasian. I keep wanting to call them the Tyrrhenians, but that's I don't think that's what they are. It's just the Tyrrhene. 
Uh, and su somehow, surprisingly, they're not engaging their transport ships that are just above this world. But they're probably about to raid Beroi. So that's a danger. They're one system over from Augusta yet again. And then we have, I mean, we, just let's be honest, we have no way of getting over there right now. <laughs> Our little pirate ships are going back and forth. We will invest into the fleet. It's just not ready yet. Governing ethics shift in the Kozier Trade League. All right, not really a big concern. What we can do, though, what I'd like to do, is start improving our star bases. So Sol is just a level one star base. Let's improve that to a star hold. This one can be improved as well. That costs 500 alloys to do. There we go, all our alloys are gone. But it's important to do that. Buff our defenses out this way. Buff potential defenses in case we get attacked by the Dacorite or something and they come through this way eventually. Always good to have some sort of preparation there. Uh, we could also just increase it for trade as well if we wanted to. Archaeological site pending. This is going to be the last one I read for today. We've gone way over, I think, in time. Uh, the records of the last years of the Charmac, uh, Charmac Society are scarce, but Septimia Arminius now believes that she can reconstruct their downfall. The Charmac campaign was successful, and the entire civilization of the Orange Freaks was wiped out as a result. Large numbers of the Charmac who were captured in the initial raids were found, liberated, and publicly shamed for their weakness. However, something strange happened afterwards. It appears their captors were trying to turn their prisoners to their side, and in doing so discussed in great detail their social and political differences. The captives then passed what they had learned on to the rest of the Charmac. We could use this ship. Battleship Charmacaterum added to our navy, or scrap it for parts. Uh, I'll take the battleship, thank you. Holy shit! I don't fully- oh, I didn't read it all, that's why. Okay. Never before had the Charmic bothered to study the structure of the societies they terrorized. And while revelation that it's possible to select one leaders based on sorry, one's leaders based on something other than their capacity for violence did not impress them at first, it had a profound effect on their psyche in the long run. The more their thought of, the more they thought about this, the more it caused them to doubt the Charmac ways, eventually driving them to compulsive insubordination of deep melancholy where they would simply refuse to follow orders, even when threatened with death, and ultimately refuse to eat, drink, and maintain their ships. Within a decade, their entire society had collapsed, and their once fearsome species became extinct. Their flagship, the Charmacadarum, the Charmacaradum, remains, however, and we can restore it back to working conditions, which we've done. I don't know, I'm going to be honest, I didn't really enjoy that story. <laughs> it seemed like a really cool, interesting premise. It's like super violent society, but then it's like, oh, just like... With the influence of like some other ideas, they essentially, I guess, tore themselves apart. Whoa! Included. There she is! I mean, it looks awesome, I gotta say. I love the design of that ship. That looks so cool. Mining drone work ethic, that was the thing we were studying. The drones and their tire, uh, tireless, endless work of extracting ever-diminishing resources from local planetoids make for somewhat dull, but nevertheless informative subject to study. In fact, mining networks on Terra could stand to learn a thing or two about maximizing mineral extraction rates while conserving energy. Additionally, we have found that the, uh, that the drones are not completely silent. They emit signal pings, though extremely infrequently at a wavelength, hard to isolate from background noise. If there's anyone left to receive these pings, it may be a mystery for another time. Easy prey, damage to ancient mining drones increase, or fascinating automata, um, drone mining techniques modifier added. Yeah, so we get 10% mineral output. It's gonna slow down time for a second. Let's have a look at this thing. Look at this beast. What is it got on it? Holy shit! This will turn the tide, I think. Although if we lose this, I'd be devastated. Beacon of Terror clash clan ship. It's got a hyperdrive three for all you nerds out there. But then it's got plasma thrusters three, which I love to see. Base ship speed increase 50%. Chance to evade, gravitrix sensors, combat computers, all of this crazy technology. You think we'd have like a further tech increase on all of this stuff now, but I don't think we do. Arc emitters, stormfire auto cannons, ion disruptors, kinetic batteries, a little bit of everything. Proton launchers, plasma accelerators, and so on. And it's even got strike craft, improved strike craft. Oh yeah. 
We need to keep this thing out of range of that Vazarin hegemony uh, and link it up with our fleet at some point in future. But this will prove very useful. Let's have a look now. Now we're equivalent as we were before. What about these guys? Now we're equivalent again. So that's a that's basically doubled our fleet strength, just this one extra ship. We need to get it repaired, get it back safely to integrate with the fleet, and then complement it with some extra ships we can help it out with. Some heavier ships. Alright, that is going to be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.